How's it going, Sabre fans? It's Patrick again, and I have another Sabre to show you all today. So instead of a Graflex, which I usually make, if you've seen some of my videos from the past, today I have something very, very different, and something very special. Today what I have is Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from The Last Jedi. More specifically, Dennis Lukianov's Creepy Uncle. Now, I don't know exactly why they call it the Creepy Uncle, but I can keep theorizing, right? So, a little bit about this hilt. It is, if not completely screen accurate, it is damn near screen accurate. Everything from the emitter to the pommel is very, very well designed from what I've seen. It looks exactly the same as it does when Luke's holding it and about to kill Kylo, Kylo Ren. But overall, it's just a really nice hilt. So, I'm going to go over it a little bit externally before diving into the internals. Uh, we have the nice Rolls-Royce emitter with the blade plug. A 632 blade retention screw. And to uh, unscrew this, you can use the 1 16th inch hex wrench that I'm going to be including. You see the... Where is it? The little divot in the blade plug. Um, the accents, more specifically the 13 trace clamp card, the slotted section, and the neck, they are brass instead of copper. I'm pretty sure that's accurate to what we see in the movie, but it's just really nice to see it. It looks really, really good. It makes the saber look older, which it's supposed to look like, and I really, really like it. The grenade section has the thicker aluminum exposed sections, these little ribs here, which I actually prefer to the thinner Return of the Jedi ones. Alright, so I've already mentioned the 13 trace clamp card and the holder right here. Here you can see the blinking red and green triangle LEDs. Here we have this rectangular section that rocks back and forth to activate the tactile and uh, the tactile activation and auxiliary switches. The top is activation, the bottom is auxiliary. They are really easy to click. Moving down the body, and as you can see, there are no machine marks at all. There are little dings on here to make the saber look a little bit aged, but other than that, it is flawless. At the bottom, you see the uh, pommel cubes without any machining marks, which is surprising because these sabers have always, for me at least, come with some sort of machine marks. You can see all the little dings and scratches here, like this here, just to make the saber look a little bit older, because it's supposed to have been through a lot. This triangle D-ring is very, very tightly held in place, which I actually really like, because I don't like it floppy, flopping all over the place. And it was a pain to get in, but thank you to the stock custom works manual it really helped me out with this in fact i use his switch holder in the control box so thank you to him for that uh... the pommel which is vented for sound can be unscrewed to reveal the chassis underneath which i will show you in a sec so the internals it has a green green white tricree led which is very bright this is the brightest saber i've ever made by far. Like, even in broad daylight, it is super bright. It has an 18650 lithium-ion battery in here. It has a 1.3 millimeter recharge port, high-amp kill key, a Veco high-base 28 millimeter speaker, and the amazing thing about this Sabre, which I just got from the custom Sabre shop that I just installed into this hilt, is the Crystal Focus version 10. And I gotta say, hands down, this is probably my favorite soundboard on the market right now. I've seen all the Teensy boards, all the Profi boards, and all the um, open source boards, and those are amazing. I'm not going to take anything away from those boards. But if you're like me and have little to no experience with all the programming involved, this is the board for you, definitely. It has so many features, it, it comes at a reasonable price at about $85, and 
it's just an amazing option. It has smooth swing, it has so many accent LEDs, and it has so many features. But one thing that I really recommend is reading the manual. Because when I installed this board, there were so many things that I had no idea how to do, like just to add smooth swing. But the board really, uh, the manual really helped me out with that, and it was just a great thing to turn to if you ever need help. So definitely read the board. Thank you, Plector Labs, for that. Even though it's still a draft, it's perfect, and it really helped me out. All right, so I'll show you how to get to the chassis. So what you do here is you slowly unscrew this um, pommel section down here because the speaker holder is actually held in place in the pommel. And you can see that big hole in there, and you can see the two wires running through. And those are actually stored down in this hole when you screw this in. So when you screw it back in, you really want to be careful, but it should be fine. So resting that here, I'm not sure how much light I have, but there I have a decent amount of light. Right there, that little silver pin right there, that is the recharge port. Here's your high amp kill switch, which if you turn off, there's no power running through the saber. But when you turn it on, I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. It's active, and here you can see the Crystal Focus version 10, and you'll notice that it has a USB, a uh, micro USB port, and as well as an SD card that you can pop out. I still prefer using the SD card, but if you want to plug it in, you definitely can. There's enough room, and it works great. All right, so to screw it back in, you just have to be really careful. And um, there are some times where the speaker holder may flip the switch, but usually it should not be a problem. Like there, it flipped the. Um, it actually did flip the switch. All right, let's just turn that back on. If I can find the switch. Oh, here it is. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. And another thing about this saber is, even though it uses just a Veco speaker, it is extremely loud. Like, I have the volume at 80%, which you wouldn't imagine to be that loud, but it is painfully loud, which I actually love about lightsabers. I love it when the sabers are super loud, you can really hear the swings, you can hear the clashes, and there's no phantom swings at all, which is great. So, now I will show you how to access the font menu. What you do is you hold down the auxiliary until you hear the R2 sound. And what you can do is you can cycle through the fonts either using the auxiliary or the activation. Auxiliary moves forward through the fonts. And activation moves back. Luke Skywalker. So just to go through the fonts a little bit, we have LS6 by K Sith, Father and Son by Wan Sith, Return of the Jedi Legends by Wan Sith, Hero by Mad Cow, which is a smooth swing font. LS6 was a custom modified smooth swing font. Skywalker ROTJ by Lord Blaco, DS2 by Project Fonts, The Light by K Sith. This is the Temple TLJ. Do not listen to that font. Um, this is a really nice font. It really captures the sound of the hero lightsaber in The Last Jedi very, very well. Kinetic, Kinetic by Lord Blaco. This is an awesome font. Best a um, Crystal Focus 10 Smooth Swing Bespin font. And the rest of the fonts are Crystal Focus 10 Smooth Swings. Made by Mad Cow. Oh. Hoth is a Smooth Swing. Yeah. Even Shatter Points is smooth swing, and they all sound really, really great. So thank you to Mad Cow for making those fonts available. Audio player. And here's the audio player. It only has one track on it right now, but who, uh, whoever purchases this saber, you can add as many tracks as you want. Luke Skywalker. And just back to Luke Skywalker. So to select it, you either press the auxiliary or activation. Auxiliary lets you hear the boot sound. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. And I'll just activate it for you guys. There you can see the LEDs flickering in sequence. Alright, so... One thing that this board has that I love 
is the smooth swing. And it sounds really, really great. And of course it has all the old features like the blasters, lock up, and lock clashes. Four sounds. Let's try to get that right. Not to betray you, Father. I feel the good in you. The conflict. And to change the colors, for this at least, what you have to do is you have to press both the activation and the auxiliary switch just by pushing down in the center and twisting the saber. But for other fonts, you can just do it with the press of both buttons. So yeah, in the next shot, I will be in a darker room, and I'll show you what the blade looks like. I won't cycle through all the fonts, just to give you guys a shorter video to watch, and just to show you what the saber looks like. Alright, so here I am in a darker room. Now I will show you what the saber looks like when it's ignited. And this saber takes any one-inch thin-walled blade. I'm using one of my test blades that I use with all my one-inch sabers. And it does not include a blade, just because the size of the box doesn't allow that. But any thin walled blade should work in this hilt. So, we are using uh, K-Sith's LS6, and let's see what it looks like when it turns on. As you can see, very, very bright. It's not even correctly focusing, it's so bright, jeez. There we go. Lock up. Let's hear some of the smooth swing. You see the accent LEDs blinking there? You get some stab sounds there. And this saber is super bright even with the lights turned on. Let me just show you. Like, even with the lights turned on, it's still super, super bright. And real quickly, I just want to show you guys the uh, Temple TLJ font. Luke Skywalker. Skywalker. Just because it's such a cool font to hear, this the hum of it's a little interesting because it switches pitches so quickly, but it's still a great font. You can hear that low-pitched hum. The uh, eight, uh, first order ATAT -AT blaster sounds. Let's try to get some force sounds. And now my favorite, the lockup. And that's just really cool. Let's hear some of those swings. It has some graph -like swings just because you never really hear the swings from this saber. Now let's see the color change. That is not color change. Let's turn it back on and try to get the color change to work. You can probably notice that's becoming a lot brighter. Like right now, I believe it only has a hint of green. Green flash on clash. Going back to green a little bit. And almost back to both greens. And we're back to both greens. So that's what it looks like with the blade in, guys. And that concludes it for this video. If you're interested, the link should be up very soon. Just click down in the link. Click the link down in the description. And thanks for watching, guys.